Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So it's currently what, 10.36 on the 25th of April. Dane reads. And uh, yeah, I was at the Art Centre Acoustic Jam in the Garden today, which was a lot of fun. And I'm currently reading The Winds of Change by Isaac Asimov. I've almost finished it, so I will be letting you know I've finished it in my next update, I imagine. Hello, it is me. Oh, I'm not wearing my Fitbit. I thought I was. Anyway, it is, um, oh, hang on, let me check my calendar. I need to flip this over. Almost bloody April, um, almost May. Right, it is m Monday, Monday the 26th of April. Um, I finished reading The Winds of Change by Isaac Asimov, so I'm currently reading Fellside by M.R. Carey. Uh, he wrote a book called The Girl With All The Gifts, which was very good. He was actually one of the first authors I interviewed for my book blog. And then The Girl With All The Gifts went on to do really well, and they actually turned it into a movie as well. So that was pretty cool. Because uh, he approached me asking me for uh, an interview as well. But anyway, so I'm reading that. After that, I'm probably going to read Tomorrow's Children by Isaac Asimov. Uh, I didn't sleep particularly well last night. There were some nutters outside in the night and then first thing in the morning something crazy was going on. There was somebody throwing stones at the guy's window upstairs to try and get him to go outside. And then as soon as they'd gone off, there's a garage just opposite me and they were using a pressure washer to wash the cars except it sounded like a jet engine. So I didn't really sleep very well at all. Um, and then I, went, I woke up this afternoon and went for my walk. Uh, and then got back and checked my emails and I've been turned down for my mortgage uh, and I, there's only one lender that would lend to me so we're in this ridiculous position now where I have access to in US dollars anyway I mean I'm British obviously but in US dollars slightly over thirty thousand dollars and I can't get anybody to lend me the remainder to get a mortgage because two things one I'm not married and so I don't have a partner putting in because basically they do the your maximum you can borrow is based upon your recent earnings and because it's just me rather than two of us, my, I can only borrow half as much as most people. So I can't borrow enough to pay for the remainder of a house here. Uh, and two, I'm self-employed as well. So I, I've got to be honest, I feel a little bit discriminated against. But uh, it's the same with um, my um, income protection. I can't get that because uh, for two reasons, basically. One, because I've been in hospital due to my anxiety. And um, because I've been advised by my doctor to drink less. But I have IBS, so that's literally the first thing they tell you to do is drink less, drink less booze, drink less coffee, um, you know, don't eat onions and garlic. But also I have been forced to go on a like a, a, an alcohol rehabilitation course or whatever, because basically my doctor wouldn't give me meds unless I went to Healthy Minds, which is counselling. Healthy Minds wouldn't treat me because I average more than six beers in a week, because I was going to three open mics a week, you know, so, uh, and then... So I had to go to this rehabilitation thing where the guy there, like he'd see me in between seeing heroin addicts and be like, there's no reason for you to be here. But he still used to treat me anyway because he wanted me to be able to get my treatment and my medication, you know. But because of that, they won't insure my income either. So I don't really know what to do at this point. I, I think the only way I'm going to be able to buy a house is if I save up the entire amount of money it costs to buy a house. So that will take me another 10 years or so. And unfortunately, like, because I'd like to move out of this place where I live at the moment, but I can't really because A, the rent is a lot higher uh, if I go anywhere else, and B, nowhere except people with pets. So I'd have to get rid of Biggie, and obviously that's not going to happen. So I don't know what the plan is at the moment. The mortgage guy is going to let me know tomorrow if any anybody else... Because basically, when he looked last time, Santander was the only one that on paper would lend me money. Uh, and they gave me an agreement in principle, and then once they looked into me, they were like, nah, you're all right, we're not going to lend you any money after all. So he's going to have a look to see if anything's changed over the last two weeks, which seems doubtful. And if it hasn't, I can't get a mortgage, so the house purchase is going to fall through. So that's a shame. Especially because, like, different bits of my family have all agreed to, like, you know, lend me a bit of extra money. So my granddad had agreed to give me some money, which would have made all the difference. It means I'd be able to pay for my house and get my, and my tax and stuff. And now it's sort of, it doesn't matter, like, because the goalposts keep moving. So when I was saving up to buy a house, the government had said you need a 5% deposit. So you put down 5% and the lender pays the remaining 95%. And the government said they were going to back them. They've done that, but not for people who are self-employed. So, you know, so then the ch send the goalposts moved to, oh, okay, you need 10% of your mortgage. And it's like, well, I have about 8%. Um, so I managed to borrow some money from family members and stuff to get to my 10% and now it's like no actually you need to put about 40% about down so I need to find another 30, 40 thousand dollars slash pounds whatever um, which obviously ain't gonna happen so well it will it'll just take me another three or four years 
<sighs> anyway, back to reading. <laughs> Rant. <laughs> Oh, hello everybody. It is 8.25 p.m. on the 27th, Tuesday the 27th of April. Uh, what's new? I mean, I've been arranging... Oh, by the way, I accidentally tie-dyed my t-shirt. It's not supposed to have these red bits in. That happened in the laundry. But I think it kind of looks cool because this is by Colourful Cat Designs. So it almost looks deliberate. Anyway, um, so I've been doing a lot of editing and stuff, film editing. I've been waiting to hear back from my mortgage guy. The latest is that uh, Santander won't give me a mortgage. Uh, and they were the only ones who said they would. Basically, when you get a mortgage, you first get what's called an agreement in principle, and then from there, that's like the essentially a guarantee that the bank will lend you money, except Santander have gone back on their agreement in principle and been like, actually, no. So now we need to try and find a mortgage provider that won't give me a mortgage in principle, but that will give me a mortgage, which seems pretty unlikely to me. I've stopped filming with my lapel mic as well, because just, it's just too much hassle, and it doesn't necessarily improve the audio quality, so uh, yeah, there's that. I've been listening to vinyl, so I'm currently just got on uh, Elvis. Which one is it? I'm listening to, uh, da, da, da. oh it's over there, so I'm not gonna show you, but I'll show you my keepers. So these are a few of the recent vinyls that are going on the key pile. So we've got Lionel Richie here. We have 20 super hits of the 60s and 70s. This was a cracking album. Uh, the best of Paul Robeson, because Paul Robeson is great and Elvis in the movies, and as I say, I'm now listening to another Elvis one that's uh, a double double vinyl. Um, but after that, I've listened to like all of my, um, you know, vocal vinyls, so then, I mean, I've got Lionel Bart's Oliver down there, which I'm gonna check out, because um, the movie's pretty good. But yeah, and then we've got like switched on back, and then loads of classical music, which I tend to listen to just while editing videos, or recently while watching this Let's Play of The Witcher by Christopher Odd that I've got on as well. In terms of reading, I'm still reading Fellside by M.R. Carey, I'm about halfway through. It's probably actually going to push me back behind my reading goal, which is to average a book a day, but that's fine. Um, I mean, I'm, I have to fall behind now because I've been reading all of the shorter books, so I only have bigger books left. Uh, but again, I, I've not been buying new books in part because I want to save money for my house, but if the house isn't going through, then there's no point. So I've also booked a new tattoo, so here, you see my stack of books, underneath here, uh, I'm gonna get, it's like a multicolored design of Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy IX is one of my favorite games of all time, um, and so there's that. I really admire it on like a storytelling level. I love the visuals as well. Um, but also, Vivi's kind of personal to me because he's, he's a black mage, but with the heart of gold, uh, which I kind of relate to. Uh, but also, he's like a clone with a limited lifespan, and so he just kind of has to cope with his own mortality throughout the game. And I've just always really related to that because I have death anxiety. So, um, so yeah, and it's like a multicolored Vivi, so he's going to be down here with his staff raised up like this. Uh, and then like there's these like colored things coming off his staff that are then going to go into where the books are. So pretty excited about that so I'm getting that done in about two three weeks and that's all I got for you so I'm gonna go and do some more filmy fooing now there's lots of stuff I have to like do little catch-up bits for so I'm gonna do that hello it is me and it is 9 p.m. on the 28th of April which is a Wednesday sleeps pretty knackered I did have a really cool dream last night though oh Biggie's coming here uh, I couldn't sleep very well and then when I did sleep I had this dream I was in Manchester and um, everything was closed and it was night time and there's a biggie here he was sitting on my back for a bit weren't you Biggs? yes and then today we got him some tasty sticks mm -hmm. so the dream was I was in Manchester going to these like tourist attractions uh, that were all locked and stuff because it was night but for some reason we could go in I was also very drunk with my friend Ali which is weird because I haven't been drunk since September uh, so yeah uh, good dream anyway, and then uh, we got a train back from Manchester, and then it got all a bit like sore And there was someone trying to kill us, and I had to jump out of the moving train It was all very intense, but it was one of those dreams where I was so like it was so vivid that I just kept going back to sleep to try and dream some more I also remember Because I because I didn't fall asleep till about 5 a.m. or something I remember it coming up to about 11 a.m. And there were two people speaking right outside my window very loudly in a foreign language um, and so then I came and I'd slept on the, on the floor in here for a bit in the living room um, just to wait until they went away and then went back to bed and I would have completely forgotten about it if it hadn't been for when I came through when I did wake up and saw the blanket down here and was like oh yeah so yeah I'm just finishing off Fell Side so after that I've got uh, what's it called Tomorrow's Children which is um, an anthology by Isaac Asimov 
Uh, both of these books have been like four or five hundred pages, so I haven't been making as much of a dent as I normally do. Been listening to a lot of vinyls, and I'm currently watching uh, this Let's Play of The Witcher that I've been watching. Uh, house news. So uh, after I got, so I got turned, basically, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. So I got turned down for a mortgage by Santander because I don't have any debt, and they want to see that you have debt that you're regularly paying off, so that they know that you can pay the debt off. Even though I would have thought it would be better to show that I'm not in debt because I've never needed to borrow any money before, you know? Um, but anyway, that's that. So now another bank is like willing to offer me a mortgage, but only without uh, like the government assistance I've received over the last year. So they take my salary minus these grants that are like the COVID grants, which is mad because they will offer you a mortgage if you've been off work for the entirety of the last, you know, 12, 15 months. Uh, but you've been paid, um, what's it called, fucking, uh, yes Biggie, I know. If you've been paid, um, oh, what's it called, I can't even remember now, uh, furlough, that's it. If you've been furloughed and you've been paid like 80% of your wages, they'll happily take that as if you're employed, but if you're self-employed, they won't accept the equivalent, which is these government grants. So actually, financially, I would have been in a better position to buy this house if I was earning less money and had been furloughed and been off work for the last 12 months than I am being self-employed where I've been working 16 hour days um, and I've earned like, I've had the best year of my career because I've been working so much. But because I'm self-employed, not traditionally employed, they won't give me a mortgage. So it's all just a fucking big joke, to be honest. Like, I find it very discriminatory, to, to tell you the truth. So this government guarantee, the go government's like, yeah, we're gonna back 5% mortgages, but they're not available to the self-employed, so I would have to go up to 10%, but actually they're not gonna lend me the remaining 90%, so actually now I need like 30%. So it basically means, because I'm not employed by another company, I have to put down like 30,000 pounds, which is about, what, 35,000, 40,000 dollars more than I would have if I was doing the exact same thing but for somebody else's company. It makes absolutely no sense. It's fucking ridiculous, to be honest. And it basically it means I'm not gonna be able to purchase this property this year and possibly not even next year as well. Um, basically because of COVID, like that's the, the real issue. But again, it doesn't matter if you're in a traditional employed job, it's only because I'm self-employed. It's, it's the craziest thing. I can't get income protection because I'm a problem drinker, even though I haven't had a drink for, what, seven, coming up to eight months. Uh, I'm treated as a smoker as well, even though I haven't smoked for three and a half months. Uh, and also, again, because of my anxiety, it's classed as a mental health issue and it's um, a high risk factor and stuff. So it just seems like constant, like, legal discrimination. Uh, another thing as well is because I'm not, I'm not married and I'm not in a civil partnership or anything, so that affects my trustworthiness as well. So it's just like they won't lend you money unless you fit into this viewpoint of what a real family looks like or whatever. Me and Biggie don't count, we can go fuck ourselves. So, the only option that I can think of at the moment is to ask the guy who I was going to buy from and be like, look, can I move in as a tenant and pay, basically pay what I would have paid for the mortgage? Well, it'll be more, that's the thing, because anyway see if I can rent from him for a year and then buy it, which he might not go for, but it's like, well, I don't know that, that's the best I can offer him, you know, at this point, and it's out of my hands. Like, I'm really keen on this place, I really wanna buy it. I have, again, currently sitting in my bank account, ready to go, I have 20 grand, which is about 22, 23,000 dollars. But again, it's not enough, because I'm self-employed. I, I, I'd only need slightly less than half of that if I was traditionally employed. It, it makes no sense, it makes no sense. So other plans, uh, I might go back to my idea which was that I was gonna go and try and spend six months at my dad's place in France that he's got. If he can let me have that rent free and I just put all my stuff into storage, I'll be able to save up a whole ton more money. Um, and then obviously that was kind of my plan. Then COVID kicked in and put pay to that, but it's like, well, I've been working as hard as I can all through the pandemic and that's not enough, mate. So um, if I'm gonna have to, I can't spend another year living in this place. I fucking hate it here. Like, it's horrible. So, I don't know, that's my option. Try and rent and then buy. If not, go to my dad's place in France. And if neither of those are possible, I will probably move back to Tamworth for a year or two, which is the town I grew up in. I don't want to go back there. I have no friends there. I do have some family, but I have no friends there. And there's like no scene. In fact, it was actually 
on a thing for the Wickham Arts Centre that I was looking at recently for government grants and uh, for culture. It was ranked, uh, I think, in the in the 150 worst places in the UK for culture. So, um, like, no theatre, no live music, none of that stuff. There's just nothing there, nothing happening. Um, and also, of those 150, about 90 of them had been awarded funding and Tamworth hadn't. So it's like, even out of all the really shitty ones, at least all the other really shitty places are getting some money in to put culture stuff on. So I don't know. I mean, I guess I could go to Tamworth and try and open an art centre, but I think I'd have the same problem. Nobody would lend me any money or give me any grants because it's like, no, you're self-employed, fuck you. So those are my options. None of them are really options that I want to do but I don't have much choice. But that's where we're at anyway. Sorry, rant over, I'm just fucking pissed off, man. I was thinking earlier, I was like, fucking Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. Man, that guy had a point. <laughs> Hello, it is the 30th of April, Friday the 30th of April. It's about noon. Uh, I've been up since about 5.30 p.m. yesterday because my sleep's all over the place. Um, mostly just because with all house stuff, I'm still just working as hard as I can doing as much as I can. Uh, I've actually got to a point where I've earned a little bit of a break now. And I've also done so much editing and eBay listing and all that shit that um, like I have to wait now for videos to render. I have to copy videos across from one computer to the other because just a uh, long story. Um, but also then once I've got my video footage, I then have to render it to get the background in before I can actually edit the footage. Um, I mean, I guess I could edit with, with the green screen and do it like that, but it, it just slows the program down a lot So it's a lot easier if I just pre-render it before I then cut it into the videos Oh, so I'm just waiting for stuff to encode and whatnot. I'm still reading tomorrow's children by Isaac Asimov I have two books to talk to you about actually. All oh, right last time I was filming the camera battery died So um, I was about to let you know uh, I was going through my books to decide what I'm gonna read next and I picked out the adventure of the six Napoleons and other cases and I didn't realise this is just a Sherlock Holmes collection. Like, and in fact, most of it, it's they're mostly from the memoirs and the return of Sherlock Holmes. It's basically the two of those bundled together with one story from the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. And I've read all of the Sherlock Holmes short stories, which means I've read this. So I guess I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5, but you know, I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I guess that, that's what I do with with books where I realise that I've essentially already read them is I just mark them as read already. And so we have an interesting case here. This is Classic Adventures according to Spike Milligan. And it's got his retellings of Robin Hood, Frankenstein, The Hound of the Baskervilles, Treasure Island and Black Beauty. I've already read Frankenstein and Black Beauty out of his retellings so I only have the three left to do. Uh, I will give this a three out of five because it's just not a particularly attractive uh, bind up of it. But yes, I'm counting this as read even though I haven't read the other three because I'm going to review the individual three in this individually. It's all madness. I've also just had a phone call from a mortgage advisor. So yes, the reason I got turned down by Santander is because I'm not in any debt. And basically, they, they want you to be in debt so they can lend money to you. It's a really weird situation. I don't understand it whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's the same as like the the other lender. They would um, they would lend me money. They basically, the government support they've been doing through COVID. Uh, uh, employed workers have been offered furlough where they get 80% of their wages. So if you're employed by somebody else, they'll count your furlough wages. But if you're self-employed, the government offered grants. And if you're self-employed, they don't count the grants. So according to the mortgage lenders, I would have been in a much better financial position had I spent the last year sitting on my ass, furloughed from work, waiting for them to take me back on again, than I have working 14 hour days. So it's all fucking stupid, mate, it's ridiculous. But anyway, so we're gonna see if I can get a 15% mortgage from Santander, which is the only bank that will lend me the money I need. That would then mean I'm gonna have to borrow some money from uh, family to, to be able to meet it. I, I can't, you know, I mean, I started out saving up for 5% because I was told that the government was backing 5% mortgages, but they are, but not for self-employed people. So yeah, if I was in a regular job, I could have got a 5% mortgage and just put down 5%, which is about six and a half thousand pounds. But because I'm self-employed, instead I have to put down, well, what's three times six and a half? 30, 19 and a half thousand pounds plus two and a half thousand pounds for legal fees. No, I'm, no, it's more than that. 
106, 16,500 is 10%. Plus another 8,250, 24,750, plus 2,500, 27, 27,250 pounds, which is about 32, 33,000 dollars, as opposed to about 11 or 12,000 dollars. So yes, it is a pisser. But we're going to forge ahead, we're going to see if they'll do that. If not, my only option is to get a mortgage that's from this specialist company that do people with poor credit ratings, even though I have what is classed as above excellent, um, I just don't have any debt. And so because I don't have any debt, I'm not considered a trustworthy lendee or whatever. I guess because if I had debt, they would see that I pay my debt off. But it's like I don't, I don't need debt. Well, I do now because I'm trying to buy a fucking house, mate. It's ridiculous, mate. Never try and buy a house, especially not if you're self-employed. Like, if I'd known all of this ridiculousness, I would have just got a normal job, like, and then been furloughed, and I would have spent the last year working on my books and getting paid by the government to do it. But no, no, can't do that. So, ah, oh, whatever. Anyway, it is what it is. Hello, it is me. It is currently uh, Saturday, the 1st of May, 10.35 p.m., um, I stayed up okay in the end yesterday until about 9 p.m. Went to bed at 9 and then woke up. Oh, I woke up this afternoon, didn't I, Biggie? Yes, you don't want to be up here, do you? Okay, I'll put you down. Yeah, so we had a meeting at the Arts Centre yesterday, like sorting out programming and stuff, basically the events for the rest of this year, which is quite exciting. Uh, we have had to move, we were going to have a Monster Day event tomorrow, but we've had to move that because it doesn't look as though the weather's going to be very good, so we're going to do it in June when we can guarantee if it does rain, we can go inside, so that's all cool. I finished reading the uh, Asimov um, collection, uh, Ch Tomorrow's Children. It was quite good. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. Has the same problem you have with uh, any anthology of short stories where some were better than others, uh, some were really good, some were terrible. Uh, but it was cool to see all the ideas and stuff. And now I'm reading Classic Adventures According to Spike Milligan. So I, I think I told you about this. I'd already read the first two in there. I've just read The Hound of the Baskervilles According to Spike Milligan. That was a four out of five. I did enjoy it. Favorite gag in that was um, they kept talking about uh, the tour, the high tour. And uh, they'd be like, high tour, I taught a pussycat. I did, I did, I taught a putty cat. So that was good. Uh, so yeah, that was like four out of five. And I've just started. Have I just started? What's next? I don't even remember. Robin Hood, that's it. I just started Robin Hood, which should be interesting because I've never actually read any of the versions of Robin Hood in general. So I'm just sort of basing it off my knowledge, rough knowledge of the actual legend itself and uh, Disney. So it should be good to see how I get on with that. Uh, I had some hula hoop chips earlier, uh, which like chips in the uh, English sense, so like oven chips, uh, and they're like hula hoop shaped, but you cook them in the oven for 20 minutes and have them instead of like potato fries or whatever. So I had those with some um, Chinese uh, jackfruit spring rolls. Spring rolls were okay, I don't really like jackfruit though, so you know, uh, but that was just like random oven stuff, so I didn't bother to show it to you guys. Uh, I have to be at the art centre at 11 tomorrow, because somebody, in fact the guy who did this, uh, who designed this, um, he's done a, a design of some herons uh, and he's done that around the back of the art centre and he's coming over tomorrow just to update it and give it a touch up and stuff so I've got to be there at 11 to do that so I might just stay awake because it's only like 12 hours from now and I've only been up for about 5 or 6 hours after sleeping for like 18 or whatever so so I'm doing that, chilling with Biggie, reading, watching a Let's Play of The Witcher. I interviewed someone for the art show earlier, a guy called Carl Snook who's got a book called, uh, I think it's called Aki in the Dream World, something like that. Um, I'm going to get a copy of that and read it soon. Uh, but he's also a wrestler uh, who goes by the name of the Pirate Captain. So we had a really cool little discussion about that. And uh, yeah, overall just staying productive. Hello everybody, uh, update for you. Okay, well, Hoppy Pumpkin Dance has asked for more of this little man, asked for some more Biggie, haven't they Biggie? Oh yes, you're a popular little man. Everybody wants a little bit of Biggie. Can't get by, can't get by with that little bit of biggie, can we? No, no, we can't. Okay, put you down. Oh, pop, pop, pop. oh bloody hell, me back. Okay, what time is it? It is 9:47 p.m. on Sunday, the 2nd of May. Um, I have been to a pub called the Flint Cottage earlier today uh, for some live music. So Maz Manzini was performing there. He's a great guy. He runs the Jams, at, uh, the Rose and Crown, which I used to go to. It was actually. The last pre-COVID event I went to was his Sunday, uh, his monthly jam. 
So um, it was good to go and see him, good to support him. It's actually the first time I've been to an event since COVID that I haven't either been performing at or have organized. So that was quite a nice surprise. Uh, still not drinking and not smoking as well. So I was on the lemonades because they didn't have any alcohol free beers or ciders, which is a bit of a shame, but hey ho. And um, yeah, it was cold. I'm still cold now and I've been back for like three hours. I chatted to a guy called Nigel Cresswell earlier, who is a poet, um, who does some great poetry. So he's gonna be the guest on uh, the art show. And I also have interviews lined up tomorrow night and Tuesday night. So we're keeping busy. Uh, so now I've got a bunch of those to film. I also have a bit of wrap up to film and some reviews because, so I also read, I read the last of those Spike Milligans. So I read, um, what was it? Robin Hood according to Spike Milligan, probably like 3.5 out of five. I've never been a particular Robin Hood fan to be honest. So that kind of worked against it. And then after that Treasure Island according to Spike Milligan, which I thought was better than the original. But then again, I didn't really like Treasure Island. I like Muppet Treasure Island and like various adaptations of it. I always think like the, the sort of final act of Treasure Island's a bit a bit dull to be honest. But yeah, I would give that a four out of five. The only problem with that is he kept making the same joke where somebody would go, help me, I can't swim. And somebody else would say, well, I can't play the violin, but you don't hear me making a song and dance about it. And it's like, yeah, that wasn't funny the first time. He did it four times. He actually did it, he did it once in Robin Hood and then four times, I think, in Treasure Island. But hey ho, I'm now reading In the Miso Soup by Ryuma Rakami. And uh, this was recommended to me by Robert Honor, who is a singer songwriter, who again is somebody I chatted to for the art show. And uh, he sung its praises quite highly, so I ordered a copy of it. I'm about halfway through at the moment, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, the, the, there's a description, uh, like a blurb that somebody gave it on the front cover where they say, um, it's like American Psycho goes abroad. And yeah, I can see that. But I'm enjoying it as somewhere between a 4 and a 4.5 out of 5 at the moment. Pro probably on course for a 4 to be honest. Um, but I doubt I'll finish that tonight because I am tired. Next up I think I'm going to read Senior Nice by uh, Howard Marks as well, which is the follow up to Mr. Nice, which is like about his time being a marijuana smuggler basically. So that's where we're at and uh, I am going to love you and leave you. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.